We also got the part where she said, great interview. <laughs> That's going in my loop, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. So Hi, this is Billy Flynn for Geek Radio Daily. We're live at Starfest, or recorded when you watch it. And I'm here with the lovely, talented, amazing Miss Julie Caitlin Brown. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Appreciate it. My pleasure. I know the world wants to ask you everything about Babylon 5, but I would love to know what your biggest jazz influences were. Ooh, good question. I don't think anyone's asked me that. Wow, I think ever. Ever? Nice. Wow. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting Ella Fitzgerald in person uh, and hearing some of the greats, uh, Peggy Lee and you know some of the fantastic guys, um, John Lee Hooker, all these great jazz and blues influences. But I was a competitive jazz singer at the age of 13. So Billie Holiday, Cleo Lane, Sarah Vaughan. Nice. Um, I was a contralto and I sang tenor in the, the choir. Really? Okay. Yeah, because I could hit like a low D. Um, but then I could go up to high C, so what the hell. Um, and when you scat, that's that's really a cool thing to do. Um, I love some of the great guys, you know, that, that sang jazz as well. Um, but I, I also was influenced by a lot of the, the big band singers. Okay. You know, like Sinatra and, oh, and you know, and for me, some of the musicians, not just the singers, were more, you know, I, I could go all. I could listen to Charles Mingus all day long. So yes, absolutely. absolutely, 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 indeed. Uh, you were in Jesus Christ Superstar, which I love. Jesus Christ Superstar. So it was that. Was that something you desperately wanted to do, or did oh it yeah, happen to nice. No, no. When I was twelve and a half years old, a church group did a um, a musical review of all the you know Jesus Christ Superstar, Godspell, you know, all these different kind of spiritually undertoned or you know deliberately overtoned uh, spiritual pieces. <laughs> Subtle. And ever since I did that, I wanted to do Jesus Christ Superstar. And so, um, and we also, in my choral, in high school, we had done the entire score to oh, Jesus excellent. Christ Superstar. So when I got the offer to play Mary Magdalene for the Mondavi concert series, I leapt at it, of course. And we were out there, there were 1,200 people our opening night. We had a 25 piece rock band and a five piece, I mean, I'm sorry, 25 piece orchestra and a five piece rock band. <laughs> and the sound went out. Oh, okay. So I'm kicking it to 1,200 people. I mean, Projection City. And it was really funny because it, it, it got me over any stage fright I could ever have had. That's, that's a good way to do it. What do you do when your mic goes out <laughs> and you're outside? I'm just going to start juggling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just, you just do it. And, and you think, well, if they can't hear me in the back, I'm really sorry, but I'm singing as loud as I can <laughs> with feeling. I'm projecting. I'm bouncing. That's oh, right. Indeed. So, of course, acting. I guess that's a natural transition for any singer. Let's do some I acting. think so. Absolutely. So, uh, B.L. Stryker, I have to know, how, how awesome is Burt Reynolds? He is adorable. Okay. I love Burt. Um, I got on the show uh, to play Diana Satterfield, who didn't talk. And she was looking for a very wealthy husband. And um, Artie Wise, who played um, his sidekick, he's about five foot five and I'm six feet tall. And so they just love the visual of us. But whenever <laughs> okay. you see me, I'm sitting down. And he's trying to hit on me and it just never works. And finally, <laughs> I read his, what's that book that they have that tells all the, there's some famous book that lists all the wealthy men. This was about 25 years ago and it, it's some kind of book. That oh, I have some, a hard problem getting wealthy men. So... So I read the book, apparently. You okay. see me, and I'm always reading, and I'm always reading, you know, burn this or whatever. You know, <laughs> and so I'm reading, and, I, and you see me reading this report, and I find out he's a, practically a billionaire. And so I get up. The whole gag is I finally get up <laughs> and walk up to him, and he's right here to the boobs. Would you like to dance? And, then, you know, and Bert just loved it. And he was so gracious. He invited me to the set of Evening Shade and to his Christmas party. And, and he was just, oh, he was welcomed my son to the set. He was just a doll. That's right. Is Lorenzo Lamas as cool? Lorenzo's a good guy. I was his stand in on Falcon Crest. I'm just going to say it. Great story. <laughs> so I do Jesus Christ Superstar. Okay. People that were running the locations for Falcon Crest in the Napa Valley right. saw me and became friends and said, you know, they're filming the Giberti house at our winery. Would you like to come to the set? I get to the yes. set and my hair was cut really short. Okay, it was like a very short. And um, they said, could you be a stand-in for Sarah Douglas? I said, okay. Sure. I mean, we're about, we look like sisters. So <laughs> I go to do that and they said, could you stand in for Lorenzo too? <laughs> really? And they said, well, yeah, because we don't have anybody tall enough or dark enough and could you just do it? And I'm like, 
Sure. So I became Lorenzo Sandin as well. <laughs> and Sandin. flash forward, because Sarah looks at me and goes, oh, darling, you just don't want to do this. You know, really, really, <laughs> just get out of the business. It's horrible. It's horrible, she says. So flash forward, I've done Broadway, I've done all this stuff. I'm sitting in an audition for a commercial, and there's Sarah Douglas. She goes, oh, dear God, you didn't listen to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, I'm still here. And we are the best of friends. Awesome. We became the best of friends, but the kicker is, Flash forward another three years, she guest stars on Babylon 5, and I have to kill her. Oh, don't tell me to get out <laughs> of the business. She plays Death Walker. Oh, yeah, okay. And yes. I cream her with a, <laughs> with a wrench this big. And we laugh about that to this day, but she's become one of my best friends. It's outstanding. Isn't that great? You certainly have a lot of fun wherever you go. I do. Well, I did, do. I, did you have a lot of fun with Baywatch Nights? Because oh, who dear couldn't? God. <laughs> Sports. <laughs> So I'm doing Baywatch nights, right. and we're out in the middle of a field, and I've got on a hazmat suit. Okay, yeah. And I'm really thinking, I hope no one recognizes me. <laughs> so like, that's all I can think is, they can only see this much of me. Maybe they'll not. Maybe they won't know. <laughs> well, we'll put the sign on you right there. That, that's awesome. No, it's very well. Of course, I do have to ask about Babylon Five. Yeah. So, um, prosthetics apparently was a problem because for Kellerman, for Mary Lou, uh, they didn't everybody. like. How, just how excruciating was all the makeup? The bottom line is when you have, when you're completely wardrobed and the only thing that's exposed to air are your lips. <laughs> okay. You're dealing with oxy oxygen deprivation. What they used to put it on was surgical glue and then they took it oh. off with a silicon product called, an oil-based product called uh, Detachol. <laughs> wow. And they would take it off your face. Um, I still have like really crepey eye right here, skin that, that's really loose from them pulling it off and pulling it off. And I also have sensitivity to light because they, they took a lot of layers of skin with them. So, and this eye, I don't see as well out of this eye as I used to. Wow. Yeah. Not it's a very dangerous thing to do long-term prosthetic work. So then and there's it, nothing there's nothing in the Screen Actors after a guild that protects you. So there's that makes it more difficult then to immerse yourself into a role if you've got all this on? No, it's easier. It does. It is easier. Sure it is. Because you're looking in the mirror and you're not you. That's not me. I can do whatever I want. Yeah, mask work, the, the challenge of mask work is to be able to push hard enough without overacting. Okay. Because in order to make the prosthetics move, they have to anchor it wherever you do this <laughs> or do this. So it has to be really solidly anchored in these spots so that you have expression through the mask. Otherwise, it just looks like a solid mask. And you don't want that. We've got enough people. That no, that's that. why stage actors do so well, because we're used to over-enunciating. Projecting from the I diaphragm. Like Absolutely. Yeah. I like that. I do like that. What was the inspiration behind Thoughts of Suicide on, a, on an Otherwise Lovely Day? Which I you can you. see, You're of course, well. at Sibling Rivalry Pictures. Sibling Rivalry Pictures .com. You can Ding. see a trailer for that piece. Uh, my brother and I wanted to do a project together. He's a seven-time Emmy Award-winning director of photography. He was vice president of NFL Films for nine years. And he wanted to do a dramatic piece. I said, why don't we write about when I had a ruptured appendix and almost died? Because I was uh, just I had an 18-month-old 18 18 baby. Um, I was doing my convention bookings. I was traveling all over the world and I didn't know I was sick. I thought oh, I had the flu yeah. and the appendix blew. Um, it ruptured. It didn't blow all the way or I'd be dead. Uh, got into the hospital and literally working on my Blackberry the entire time I was in the hospital. Had a $750 cell phone bill just for that week. <laughs> I got two secondary infections and I got really, really tired. And we had, we had had, um, 9-11, we had had all these things that had happened and I was tired and I had seen a lot of bad things. And I, you know, a lot of, the, the hard thing about fandom, and I'm not going to say which show it was, but there was a particular show where I was repping most of the cast at the time. I don't rep them anymore. And their fandom was very emotional and very, they liked to party. And unfortunately it turned ugly. And so I was getting the brunt of it because I was the gatekeeper. I was the bad guy that was keeping them away from their star. Because they were they were ripping these people's clothes off. I mean, they were just being really, really over the top. And so we had to protect them. And they were coming on my Facebook, not my Facebook page, on my website and on my fan page. And they were being very abusive. And I got really tired. And I really laid in that hospital room and said, you know, I could just go. I'm wow. good. I well, believe the planet. And that's what I did. So I, but the movie was very uplifting at the end because I chose to excellent. stay, apparently. Well, I'm very glad you're still here because you know I still I still love shredding my skin wherever you will go. My favorite of your songs. Oh, please do thank more. You. And I would like to thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And, and please have a rest of a fantastic weekend. Here's I Starfest. will. I love Starfest, and thank you. Thank you. You can draw here.
Do the yeah. drop again? Do the drop Damn again. Damn good interview. Thank you. Very, very, very good. Well prepared. Yeah, do the drop yes, again. Yes, I will. Do this one? Uh, yes. Hi, this is Julie Caitlin. Wait a minute, say it again. What is it? Geek Radio Daily. Geek Radio Daily. Hi, this is Julie Caitlin Brown of Babylon 5, and you're listening to Geek Radio Daily. We also got the part where she said, great interview. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to my loser, baby. <laughs> yeah, baby. So Geek Radio Daily. All the geek without the weight. GeekRadioDaily.com